Hey everyone and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones and finally I'm back from vacation. Now it's been nice but obviously it's good to be back and I had a look at all you guys comments. Uh, I didn't respond to most of them obviously because they uh, some of them are two weeks old but um, the more recent ones I obviously responded to and I read all of them of course and uh, yeah you have quite a lot of suggestions uh, especially concerning this series and I just want to quickly mention that obviously I was in a rush when I recorded uh, the last about eight episodes that you've watched um, because well I was going on vacation and I had to pre-record something uh, in order to uh, have something going on while I was away and I do admit that things went weird really fast. Now some of this is just simple CK2 Game of Thrones stuff but uh, other things well, let's just say, it, if I had more time, I would have done things differently. For example, the whole succession crisis, my whole handling of that, was probably not the best way to do it. And also, it wasn't the best way, uh, or it wasn't the way I personally, you know, as as a person would have done it, if that makes any sense. Obviously, I'm trying to, or I was trying to roleplay myself when I was playing as Lord Mark. Uh, now things are going to be a little bit different because I'm no longer playing my first character, but... Yeah, anyways, so what I would have done, I just want to quickly mention mention that, what I would have done if I had more time, I would have probably just um, added in the disinherit trait to my firstborn daughter, Eleanor, because for some reason it wasn't, it wasn't working um, through the intrigue options. So I don't know what the reason behind this is, doesn't matter to me, uh, but I, that's what I should have done. And then my daughter, Charlotte, would have inherited and I would not have created all of these bastards, at least... Uh, that's a fun. Or, well, I guess I still would have married um, this lady right here. So probably Duncan would be inheriting or would be ruling Sentinel's Point right now. But um, I still have to save, uh, so I could go back and change all these kind of things. But uh, since you've already seen that stuff, I don't want to do that. I don't like doing that. So we're just going to continue with the, the situation that we have right now. And I think that's a pretty interesting one. So yeah, it's not too bad. Um, now, what I do want to show you though, one one change that I've made is I actually sent Eleanor um, off to Longtable to live with Lord Orton, the exile. And the reason is very simple because uh, Longtable has a, um, well, has a vassal here in uh, the castle of Bounty Hall. And uh, that is Leonette. And she's married to Sir Terence Blue Clay. And he's obviously the lover of... Of Eleanor. Now, the reason behind this is very simple. Um, she, it, it just didn't really make sense to me that Eleanor would stay in a in a court where she was imprisoned twice. It just doesn't really make much sense. So I just moved them. And also, uh, you've probably seen that already, but I have actually uh, added the disinherited trait to it. Now, it doesn't really make it doesn't really change much since she has already inherited a little bit of money, but at the very least, she's now banned from succession. So um, the next one in line is obviously my half-brother Duncan, and then we have Charlotte uh, as next, well, sentinel to inherit. Um, but yeah, that's just what's happened. Now, one thing I should also make clear, someone in the comments has already figured that out, but I don't know if everyone knows about this. Um, Luke Sentinel uh, was slain by Dick Blacktide because he... Um, he was the champion for Eleanor in her trial uh, by combat when she was imprisoned the second time. The first time, remember, I paid the ransom, she got imprisoned again, and then she sent uh, for, for Luke to uh, get her out of prison, but he was slain. So this is how uh, House Black Tide has screwed us over, and even though I could not uh, console command a true blood feud between our houses, I will definitely work towards to establishing one, um, and we'll do that by kidnapping Lord Oric or, or someone else, we'll see. Now at the moment, obviously, there's not much I can personally do because I'm zero years old. So, um, yeah, th th there's that. But what I do kind of find interesting is that we're actually going to continue the tradition of being a legitimized bastard just like our father was. So that's kind of cool. I guess we could make that a family thing, but maybe there are better uh, or there, there are cooler things to do. Anyways, uh, that's all I wanted to mention. Uh, obviously, I also had a look at all your guys' characters, custom houses, and I made sure that, um, that you have proper wives and that your lines continue. Now, most of your houses actually have an heir or even several heirs already. Some of them don't, but I definitely made sure to make them a bit younger. For example, uh, let's have a quick look at Hollis Goldheart. He was one of the oldest. Now, I made him, I think, 
14 years younger, maybe, I don't know for sure. And I um, also made his wife much younger, uh, just so that there is still a chance of House Goldheart continuing. Now, he's already, he already has gonorrhea and is a lunatic, but still, we'll see how long he can uh, hang on to life. Uh, he definitely does want to have a son, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's all the news from Sentinel's Point, and now there's one thing that I need to talk about, one big thing, because uh, we were so focused on the succession crisis in the last couple episodes, we completely missed that Hagen III of House Magna declared the War for Dawn against the White Walkers, and he's already winning by 88%. This is huge. I mean, I, I, I actually, I was thinking about cheating so that, uh, you know, at least the war would be declared, but it seems like we don't have to do that, and I'm very happy about this. So, yeah, we're gonna continue, and maybe winter is gonna end uh, in this episode, so we'll see. Now, after this long intro, we're actually gonna go forward and see what's happening. I think we're still holding a feast. Also, there should be a couple of um, marriage proposals coming in, yes. Uh, we're just gonna accept them, as I said, I just made sure that you, uh, that your guys' characters actually have someone to marry. Um, okay, so there we go, and um, I accept your marriage. Yes, the funeral. Yes, uh, the silence in the silences. Okay, um, this is always the same thing. Yeah, the body of Lord Mark is brought to the local sept and laid atop the altar at its center. Um, okay, yeah, we've we've read that before. Um, what what I do want to read though is this little. Box right here. Loot Mark Sentinel died on suspicious circumstances. As someone pointed out in the comments, uh, it was most likely suicide. Uh, he died in Old Stones, um, a castle that he wanted to colonize, a castle that he was very interested in. And um, well, he then um, committed suicide because he was so stressed. He was so stressed by uh, the succession crisis um, and uh, by well the dishonor he brought to his house by fathering all of these bastards that he just, he ended his life prematurely. Anyways, um, he was a man with little likes or dislikes who just lived each day as it came. He was a competent swordsman, but not a warrior uh, songs are written of. Uh, okay, so yeah, he was kind of an ordinary man, but uh, he was a good man. He was indeed. So, so it is done, that was the funeral. I think we can go a little bit faster. Um, now obviously I know uh, we are going quite slow today. Uh, yes, one more marriage proposal. We haven't really uh, <laughs> spent much time. Yes, okay, thanks. All of these uh, marriages. Um, it's actually quite a lot. I didn't I didn't think it was that many. Anyway, um, obviously, as I said, we're going forward slowly. I've talked quite a lot, but you know, those are those are the things that I need to do once once I'm back from vacation. Now, um, I've also been thinking um, to actually restrict myself. <laughs> with uh, spending money, because I I really want to colonize old stones, especially because that will limit these weird things that are happening with these with these ruins. So I, I think I just need to do it. I think I just need to wait until I have a thousand gold coins and, you know, not spend my money on anything. But I will probably forget about that halfway through the episode. Anyway, um, this is another marriage. Yes, we'll accept that. I, I think, at the very least, that was, yeah, that was correct. Okay, good. Um, and let's move on. Now, how is the War for Dawn going right now? Ah, uh, it should be, it should be over. Yeah, still 88%. I guess we'll, we're sieging down Castle Black now, is that it? How many men are there? 416. How many Northerners are there? Um, okay, the Veilman War for Princess Ermesina's claim on the Iron Throne as attacker. Oh. Lord Paramount Peter has declared war. Okay, we'll have a look at that very soon. For now, though, I... Oh, we are apparently not supporting the Iron Throne? Yep. Okay, Ambrose Tully is not supporting the Iron Throne. Um, so what's going on? We have uh, Peter Aaron of the Vale, Princess Ariana of Dawn, Carhold the Neck, the Sisters, Blackwater Rush, the High Septon, and the Reach. Um, fighting Sinel? Why? Uh, Princess Ermesanda's claim. Okay, that is Princess Ermesanda right there. She is married to the Lord Paramount of the North. Well, not the worst choice. I mean, after all, he's the only one uh, who finally decided to take up arms against the White Walkers. So he has my respect, indeed. He would make for a good king. Um, I don't know much about Ermesanda, obviously, but I, 
I come to like Hagen, uh, and I hope that he can end Winter soon. Now, someone was also asking whether or not uh, I would take over the brothel now. Uh, that would be very funny to have a zero or one year old uh, take over a brothel. Um, but it does not seem to be the case. Yeah, we're making much less money. But as soon as winter ends, things should be a little bit better than that. Uh, how how is it looking? We're at 94%. That's very close. So the uh, the uh, shadow tower has been retaken. The both of the gifts have been retaken, and now Castle Black is the only thing that needs to be taken over. Uh, the White Walkers have 400 men, and I think Hagen has 8,000. He's actually supporting the Iron Throne, so that could potentially cause some problems, and he's also wounded. Ooh, he is still in Castle Black, so I think it's just... Yeah, we're just waiting for this castle to fall. Alright. Now, um... We... Oh, yeah, we have... Raiders. Now, obviously, the whole Black Tide thing that that happened um, definitely causes me to to hate the Ironborn. Now, we should have we should have probably never befriended an Ironborn Lord. That was strange in the first place, especially because we are bannermen to House Malister, the ones that have created Seaguard for the sole purpose of defending against Ironborn Raiders. And um, we should have never, we should have never mixed with Ironborn scum, as someone uh, correctly said. But we have learned that lesson now, and we will never do that again. At least uh, I hope so. And what's this? Okay, that's not enough men to fight these guys. That's not enough. Okay, but House uh, House Tully is uh, rising, uh, raising their men. Okay, that's very good. Army of Jamie. Okay, don't know which Jamie that is. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but obviously the Iron Throne, uh, or, or the, uh, I guess, the borders within the Iron Throne and the several kingdoms are a mess. It just looks hideous. So how's this going? How's this war going? You're probably losing. You don't have any. We have Maidenpool, Goldtown, and Krakal on your side. Yeah, you're already losing by 31%. That was to be expected. Rumor has it that your courtier Della has been influenced by her guardian's splendor. It is said that Della is now considered properly Riverman. Very good. Very good indeed. Um, I hope it's a beneficial influence. Well, there you go. Now, uh, we are personally actually a Veilman, which is a bad thing. Well, not technically, um, but obviously I would much, much prefer it if we were a Riverman. But luckily, we can change our culture later on, so that's good. We'll do that. Actually, uh, I wonder which of these choices is going to be better. Um, this seems to be easier. Um... We just become... Okay, there's no repercussions to that, it seems like. Very good. Uh, what's this? Uh, we have improved relations with uh, our liege, Harry's Malister. Now, I would definitely hope that he has a son at some point. That'd be, that'd be great. Because otherwise, Silver the Exile will inherit. And that, that would suck. That would just suck. Um, okay, we can imprison Marina Laurels. Going against the will of the council. What? Just end your plot then. There you go. You want to kill Aglatine Justice. No, we're not going to do that. And Geo Worth, you need to be... You need to stop your plot as well. Right. Um, replace Sir Albert Locksley as treasurer. Yeah, don't want to do that. Stop it. Now, actually, Geo Worth obviously killed Sir Kenri Kenrick Valkyrie in personal combat. And now Ben Valkyrie, um, who I married to a much younger glove at this time, um, he has inherited quite a fortune. Which I think is is amazing, um, and I think I've, yeah, okay, never mind. Um, this is cool. I think this is really cool that he has so much money. He has just almost as much money as we have, and that's just from tournaments. Um, so if we become a better fighter, we might be able to well make a lot more money just just by attending these tournaments. I've never really had a good tournament. Actually, I don't remember. I don't remember if I ever had a, a good ruler, a ruler that was really good at, at tournaments uh, and made a lot of money from that. Anyway, um, let's have a quick look at this. This seems to be 29... Okay, so they are fight the Iron Throne is definitely fighting back. They have 9,000 men. I just hope... Oh, what's going on with the North? The North is... Oh, okay. So the North is, has won. Winter is gone. The Night's Watch has been reestablished. Thanks for the uh, update there. Uh, great. I guess I must have missed it, but that's that's nice. So winter has ended technically. We'll see. I, I think if winter has not come to an end by the end of this episode, then I will probably 
uh, try and console command it. We'll see if that's possible. Anyways, so Dirk, you are the commander of the Shadow Tower, Brandon's gift, and the new gift, and the Night's Watch. That's amazing. That's amazing indeed. So who is ruling Castle Black? We have Harmon Penhollow. He was a peasant, a stone Dornish peasant. Then we have Walder Barrows, a Northman. Very cool, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Okay, wow, and he's a Kinslayer now. Okay. Well, whatever it takes, I guess, in order to... Uh... Who did he kill, though? I wonder who he killed. The Barrowlands. Helic Magna. Oh, wow, a formidable fighter. And he is uh, Lord of Hornwood and the Barrowlands. Hmm, House Magna has definitely risen, or definitely, well, used their their power of the north to rise in strength. Um, so that's that's for sure. And then we have tons of wildlings over here. Now, okay, uh, does that get rid of the winter modifier? I don't think it. Ah, uh, it didn't. It didn't. Maybe we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but it should it should actually go away. Ah, this always bothers me. This always bothers me. So I'm guessing that the White Walkers still technically hold land. <sighs> I thought that has been fixed. I thought that has been fixed. I don't want to look for ruins. I do want to look for white walkers though. Yeah. You're a wildling. you white mask. How about someone who's old? Yeah, this guy. There's several people. You have winter and so do you. Not good. Not good at all. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what to do about that because if I just kill these characters, uh, they're in the Shivering Forest. If I just kill these characters, someone's gonna inherit, so that doesn't really help. But there's two Winter uh, titles, and they need to they need to go away. Anyway, uh, you accept and force reports that Sir Timon of Silver Springs has been humbled. Very good. So more relations and Willis the Generous has died. Uh, a cripple. Okay, who's who's in charge of the Reach now? Who's in charge of the Reach? Luke Commander Loris has been executed by Queen Sunel. Oh, wow. And Garland died in battle. Yeah. And Marjorie just died from too much drinking. Of course she did. Of course she did. Um, okay, you've sieged that. Very nice. So who's, who's ruling the Reach? I wonder. It must be a Tyrell. Aemon Tyrell. A lunatic gonorrhea, dude. Okay, and he also has the Mandafood. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there it is! Nice! Okay, good. No console commands. I'm very happy about this. I'm very happy. So no more winter. Winter has officially ended. Very great. This is, this is amazing. So finally, we can build things much cheaper again, which, well, yeah, I, I know I wanted to save up money, but I think we're also making more money now, aren't we? Um, no, it doesn't look like that, actually. It doesn't look like we're actually making more money, but still, we're gonna lose less money um, but when we're building buildings, and they're gonna be built much faster as well. But you you guys just need to end your plots. I don't want these plots. Yeah, don't don't kill any other people. Don't do that. Now, obviously, Sadafin, he was one of the guys I made younger, especially his wife. Oh, actually, he's not married. Well, there you go. You need to marry, and I'm gonna marry you to this lady right there. Enjoy. Yes. She's 20, that should give you plenty of time, um, because I want House Talister to continue, obviously. And yes, you stop your scheming. We have some weak claims. Castle of Gold Tower for Charlotte Sentinel. Castle of Gold Tower. Ooh. He has 400 men. A 13-year-old. How many men do I have? I have 500. Now that's a lot more. He's currently fighting. Ooh, could I declare the war? Um, no. Who has Ghoul Tower then? I have to declare one the Iron Throne? Really? Ah, shit. Well, I'm not gonna do that then. That's That seems a little bit much. We're not gonna do that. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna have to stick around. So we are three years old. We're being educated by our mother, Theona, of House Blue Clay. And um, so far, we've not gained anything. Uh, do we even have... Well, we have one base of... One base learning. I guess that's good. We have the uh, pride focus. Which should give us a martial education in the end. What's going on in the Vale? Uh, are you still fighting? 
you're actually not winning as, as much as I thought you would. Yeah, you're, you're losing war score for some reason. So Devin has been a leal and able surgeon as not... Why do I keep saying surgeon? Servant, obviously. And of course, he will be rewarded. Now, he was one of the guys that I actually... Um, that I actually made a little bit younger, or, well, at least his wife I made younger, uh, in the hopes of him continuing his life. We'll see. We'll see how he does. Anyways, though, I think we're going to end this episode here today. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and yeah, it's it's a glorious day. Winter has come to an end, uh, and I'm very happy about this. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys next time.